recording is from a live presentation on how to sculpt chocolate by Chef Jacques. We have uh, Chef Jacques Lunet, who is joining us from the <laughs> Art Institute. And Aunt Leslie, and Randy, and I, it's a special treat because that's where we went to culinary school. And it's our <coughs> pleasure to see our old instructor again showing us some wonderful stuff. So today, he's going to show us some techniques on chocolate sculpting and talk to us about all the other things that you can do with chocolate. And at the end of the presentation, you'll see there's a link to his YouTube channel and uh, some other videos of stuff that he has done as well. So without further ado, uh, Chef Jacqueline. Thank you all. I was always an artist before I became a chef, so my counselors told me you can do art on the weekend, but you need to get a paycheck. So <laughs> folks, they sent me in the kitchen, and here I am. Every time I had a chance to play with food, <laughs> which my mama told me never to do, now I play with food and I get paid for it. Now you don't need to be very, very artistic to do something that's kind of cool. White chocolate? Because chocolate lasts. You think your chocolate is gonna melt, right? No, it's the environment, it's fine. You can keep a piece like this after you got it done for years. Keep it in a dry environment, that's it. By the way, that was a 60 pound of chocolate uh, Einstein that I did for a company, Nestle Chocolate. Who doesn't like chocolate in this room? No hand raised. Okay, that's what I thought. It's a very popular item. Even compared to sugar and some other things, sugar, pastillage, you don't want to take a bite at that. Uh, you know, it, it, it's pretty, it's edible material. But chocolate is edible material and you, that you can actually eat and want to eat. I want to make sure I, I mention that whenever you do something like that, make sure you put a display card that says what it is. Because I've seen a lot of people go to a buffet and the pieces look so good that they just pass, pass by just out of this or whatever. But if they know that it was carved by hand with chocolate, and you can tell them how they found chocolate and all that, like, oh wow, look at that, uh, I want a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> what type of chocolate this is? Because there's chocolate and chocolate and chocolate and chocolate. Actually, this is not a true chocolate. Oh. It's not what? A true, true. chocolate. <laughs> this is a chocolate compound. It's a pata glacé. When you do a block, you don't have to worry about tampering, crystallizing that chocolate. It's a little bit less expensive, which is a good thing to make a showpiece. And, and yet, it's very forgiving. And what if you're not an artist? Not everybody is an artist. You can do more simple shape. You're going to see some of my example. I'm an artist. I, I, I don't mean to look, but that, that's me. That's, that's my makeup. So, But you can do something that's kind of cool. It could be a figure. It could be a logo. It could be different type of things. Now, when I say that, if it's something very linear, very you may you may want to use different technique, you may not want to carve a block of chocolate to make a, a letter A or something like that. That wouldn't make any sense. As long as it's something that's kind of three-dimensional, you can do some simple, simple stuff. And it's going to be impressive but, but just being a big block of chocolate. Mm -hmm. These were actually uh, two bookends and a book that I did are all out of chocolate. So it was not carved, but the, the, the birds for the bookends were carved and the, the book was just uh, molded and assembled together for an event in Houston years ago. Some of the tools, I mean you can do, you don't need that many tools. I, I just illustrated some of the most common tools but you can do with half of that. These are some optional stuff. Some of the stuff you already have in your kit, Garmanger tool, the round border, cutting knife and then after that you should have some sort of a V chisel. These are wood chisel. I use that for ice carving as well. And then some set of smaller ones. So it's not a major investment in tools to do what you gotta do. Good old Santa sculpture of Santa Claus. I was a little younger. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I wanna show you that and you'll have a chance to go back to it and check in more detail. By the way, if you go to my channel, I recommend you do that on a computer where you have a screen, not two by two, because the details are pretty amazing, so you really want to see this on a bigger screen. I wanted to show you this because I don't know how far I'm going to go with this picture because an hour 15 minutes to do a full carving, it's a little uh, too ambitious. So I brought this little guy here. I know there was a little puppy there that saw the last minute, but, but this is going to stay a little bit more still. So it's a good idea to use a three 
dimensional as opposed to just photos of stuff. So you can really see if you really want to get into detail. So making a block, I got two of those buckets and I pre-glued that to save us some time. I just popped them out of the bucket. I did dug some mark, melted some of it, and then glued them together. And now you've got that big block. I have a cutting board. I have a turntable here to turn it a little bit. And I got the this to try to limit the damage when it comes to uh, chips <laughs> escaping, right? So now we're going to put that in. And it should release. <laughs> so I'm going to flip it around. I have a flatter bottom. You see how I glued them together? So now I made a big block. So you could build a, a box to approximate the kind of shape that you, you're looking for. You can tell that this is not long enough to cover this shape. That's on purpose because I'm going to show you how you can add. That's the beauty of this. Uh, but this is very forgiving. I have a warmer. Now you could have a microwave too, right? Something to melt your chocolate. So this you can control the heat. Chef, do you have to worry about the heat from your hands? Um, <coughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I promise I won't lick it. <laughs> now just be careful when you, when you do this, uh, those things are fairly sharp. So make sure you don't have your hands uh, in the wrong place, okay? So if the blade slips, make sure it's not in your hand. The hand will give. I can take a kind of spatula and I can put some, boom, in my warmer, right? So it's going to start melting gently, so I can show you different uh, steps. So I'm going to do the head of the bird, it's going to be around here. So you can trace a little bit what you want to do. You can trace on the side. It's still pretty rough right now. But I want to have an idea of if the head is here. Don't forget the, to keep the ears, even though you could add them later. So now I'm going to get busy. Any questions? What I'm getting busy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting yes. work out. You see how nice it comes? Huh? Yes. Is that exciting or what? Don't say or what? I'm taking names. <laughs> oh, look at that. Huh? You see that? Uh -huh. I'm amazed that nobody wanted to be my assistant already. <laughs> I'll pick up the chips. I'll pick up the fallen bits. So you can put that back in the bucket and then reuse it? Yep. Absolutely. Oh, no damage at all. Something very low. Low heat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, microwave. Very low crock pot. Anything that's low heat kind of thing. Double boiler, but again, very low right now because that can get hot too, yeah. right? Yeah. How's it going, Leslie? Mm -hmm. Leslie is my uh, camera <laughs> handler over there. Do you all look handsome? <laughs> <laughs> Always, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds my favorite. Tell my students that my, my alumni, they've been brainwashed very well. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> all right, so you see the bird coming out? You yeah. see it? Yeah. With a little imagination. Oh, you know. Michelangelo said, sculpting is easy. All you have to do, you got a block of marble or whatever it is, or chocolate in this case. All you have to do is remove what's not the end result. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, you all can do it. Just, just remove what's not the bird, and here is the bird. And that's what I'm doing now. Rigging as a bird. By the time I'm done, we will need a broom on aisle five. <laughs> <laughs> little by little, I'm getting into some shape here. Yeah, I know you can't see the bird yet, but be uh, patient. We are in the second, into the second class. Yes. Where are you originally from, Chef? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold it against me. <laughs> I wanted the good one. <laughs> Yeah, don't say that, don't What made you come to America, Chef? Uh, well, being a French chef in France is no... You know, you're not a prophet in your own country. I figured I may have a little less competition here. <laughs> you're from Lorraine, right? Lorraine. Lorraine. Northeast of France, yeah. That's what's beautiful about this chocolate is because it's so forgiving and you can deal with it so many different ways. You can make these things quicker. Yeah, that's melted. 
Wow. <laughs> Sometimes I'm so into this that I forget that he's facing me. Next time we do this, we'll set up camera. He's doing one of those cameras. So about that. Huh? Yeah. We'll, we'll put this in the budget. <laughs> Good luck with that. You know how that goes. Right? Good luck with that. I'm going to get a little bit, try to get a little bit more into detail of the face. Because I know I cannot finish it, but I'm trying to take it to a place where you can see different techniques. Right now it's a takeaway, only the takeaway, but I'll show you more. So you can start seeing a little something here. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nothing quick yet, but uh, what was that? Ooh, yeah. what is it? <laughs> I used to work on my own impersonation. <laughs> So uh, sometimes the, the V, as I said, you have a straight one, you have a V one, if you, you can go a long way with this, and after that, you're paring now, after you're whatever. But the V shape, you can really, when you want to do. <laughs> so I want to show you the V cut deal, okay? I don't know if you can see that. It's really what you want to get. I mean, you really get quickly in detail. So before that, the flat cut was just getting to the general shape. But as soon as you're getting into detail, you really can do this here. So I'm shaping around the eyes. I'm going to do, place the beak. I'll tell you, Chef, I admire the fact that you've been working with that chocolate for about 45 minutes now and you barely have a speck of chocolate. I'm <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't lick my fingers here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, that's because I, I know you guys are watching me, so. <laughs> uh, this is uh, made especially to melt chocolate, by the way. I turn it around so you don't see the brand, because they don't give me money. So. <laughs> Look at this. Now, I want to melt it, but I don't want it hot. I don't want it warm. I want it just melted. And you're going to see how amazing that thing is. Take a look. Oh, wow. wow. You see, now, now it starts getting somewhere, mm -hmm. right? You're working on smaller details now? Yeah. Kind of see a little bit more details. Now I want to make sure I have enough time to show you different techniques, how you can fix mistakes, how you can add. Because sometimes when you do like this, a block, it may not be giving you the exact shape you're looking for, so you may need to add some of the body, right? Like Dan was saying. You all know Dan, right? No. Dan. <laughs> right? At some point in time when you want to, when it, ooh, ah, ooh, you want to massage it, ooh, see? Now, now the birdie is feeling all happy, right? Look at that. See, so you, you really, okay? Ooh. Right? So, you, you really finish it, would be, you, you wouldn't be doing this with tempered chocolate, right? I mean, you would, but it, it would look pretty. That's to finish it, and then, that chocolate is not melting. Well, I think, I know why. I think by putting the lid on, it will, it will keep the heat a little bit. I should have known it, uh, the, 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 the counter is in Celsius. <laughs> is your beans. Notice how I got a cutting board underneath, right? And I got a turntable, of course it's not turning as much as I want it to turn because of what I could elevate the turntable. Don't forget the cutting board so that when you whoop, slips, you don't want it to hit something like the turntable. Or... Okay, so now, now we're going to get into the clay mode. Our birdie is here, and our birdie's got a tail. Look at that. What kind of material can you do that with, like that? Maybe butter? Uh, well, edible. <laughs> yeah, clay. Good, good answer. She's paying attention. <laughs> Ooh, I'm building a tail. Look at that. I'm building some ears. So you made a mistake. You cut too much. No biggie. Look at that. Ooh. Ah. See? How long will it take until it's ready to work on again? Good question. Depending on the temperature of the room. Not that long. And, and you may need to work with it a little bit better count softer, but, yeah. but I mean, that's really, I, I really wanted to show you that because it's really so forgiving yeah. that you really, it's, it's not unapproachable. Isn't that fun? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> yes. Very fun.
The other thing is, ta da! Ta da! Ta da! Ta da! A food lacquer to give it a nice shine when it's finished. Okay. And protective coating. That's edible. Oh. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> but that's, I've been using, using that for, I was using that already when I was Bermuda. But, so. And apparently, they are the only one I know that do that. Edible food lacquer. So even if you spray something with the food lacquer and you want to remelt it and reuse it, it's okay because that is edible, or it's it does something else to the chocolate afterwards. Mm. That's a good question. I've never remelted a piece that's finished with the lacquer. Okay. If I were to remelt, I probably would scrape off the top layer. Okay. Yeah, good question. I never bumped into that, but uh, yeah. So. We're using uh, all the scraps for further carving, yes. Also, by the way, the sugar people, sugar, to protect them from humidity, same thing. That's, that's not just for chocolate, any kind of edible uh, showpieces, right? And when we say edible showpiece, the showpiece is not edible, it's made with edible material. We're trying to stay, stick with things that are considered edible. Let's see how this is doing. So you see, um, it's still a little soft to recarve, but if you give it a little bit more time, or you can use different tools, clay tools to mark the feathers, or to give you, so again, that gives you some different options instead of using the actual carving, that, that for that you need the, that's a little soft for, the, for these kind of tools. Right? So does that give you an idea about to carve chocolate, guys? Yes. Oh wow, I mean, Damn. it's not the piece obviously, it's not, but I think it gives you enough to know where we're heading. Did I cover, do you think, what you need to know, tools, yes. to yes. anybody inspired to try to show your student this? <laughs> <laughs> Another thing I want you to know, if you go on main. my uh, channel, you have questions. Now, later, send me a comment uh, on the one of my video with your question. I respond to <coughs> every comment, watch one of my chocolate video or something else, and then ask me a question. We, we, we hooked up now, we, we, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So don't be strangers. <laughs> 